<laughs> Alrighty, welcome back to Dungeon Crawl Stone Soup. Uh, when we left off, we had mostly cleared off this level with um, good old Billings Hand. Yeah, there we go, we're done. I don't know why I'm still wielding that dorky scimitar. Um, oh, wow, I didn't even notice that the entrance to the orcs, uh, the orcish mines, is on this level. That's kind of cool. We won't be going there yet. I like to clear at least levels 1 through 6 of the layer before I go to Orc. Uh, I like Orc to be as easy as possible. I like to be able to run right through down to Orc 4 where the vault is um, and all the big baddies and, and be able to take them on without too much difficulty. Um, just so I can, you know, have access to the shops that are usually at the bottom uh, they're down on Orc 4. Uh, see, that situation would have been a lot more dangerous had we not had that corpse there, but we're fine. One thing we have to balance uh, now that we have, uh, now that we both worship Okawaru and have the um, the Powered by Death mutation, uh, you steal the life force of nearby defeated enemies. Um, we have to be careful about resting to the point where those corpses rot, because we can no longer sacrifice them to Okawaru at that point. Uh, he doesn't like rotted flesh. Uh, it's not a good sacrifice. However, uh, we are fortunate to have the foul stench mutation, which lets us eat rotten meat, so we can rest until they rot and then eat them uh, with our amulet of the gourmand. Uh, and I'm also excited because our next mutation um, could be our tier 3. I, I think that you have to have all the other slots at least begun before you get tier 3. That may not be true, You may it may just be random, um, but I feel like tier 3 generally is not the first one I get. Um, and tier 3 mutations are insane! Uh, giant frog. There was a phantom down there, but I'm not too worried about him. We can just fill him with arrows. It was a fantastic short story in a, an anthology of magic. Ooh, we almost ran right into those ice beasts. I wonder if there's an entrance to... Uh, an entrance to an ice cave here that I haven't been noticing the messages for because I've been a chatterbox. Switch to the Bow of Flame. Oh, no, it might be an entrance to the lair. Let's let's see. Control P brings up the uh the log of messages. Okay, no, I uh, I don't think that there's I don't think that's an ice cave. I don't see any messages. Uh ice caves are um temporary branches similar to volcanoes and baileys and ossuaries and uh sewers. Uh, man, this is really stupid. I don't know why I'm just standing here shooting off arrows in the middle of a room with an unknown number of monsters down there. Yeah, that, 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 was, that was dumb. Uh, okay, we're much safer now. This yak is all up in our grill, but we can, we can just machine gun him down. Uh, okay, oh, let's, let's go ahead and eat this yak. Get up to very full. I always like to be very full or engorged when, uh, when I have an amulet of the gourmand. Um, oh, we have even more flesh than I thought. Okay, uh, because there's no reason not to, um, really, unless you are starving for piety for some reason. You accidentally hit the five key. The rest 100 turn. Or rest until healed, or 100 turns, whichever is. Um, shorter. If you accidentally hit that 20 times and lose some piety with Okaru and then something sneaks up, I, I can't think of a situation where you would instantly need a whole bunch of piety, but um, if that situation were to occur, we would not have to worry about going hungry uh, while sacrificing all the corpses we came across because we would have a higher food clock. It also lets us sort of indiscriminately sacrifice things uh, to try and gain piety, uh, rather than having to keep track of it. it it's it's sort of a, a meta or an intangible benefit, not having to keep track of something, but 
uh, intangible benefits do translate. Okay, we're drained. Ah, I don't like being drained, but we can we can struggle through. We'll we'll go ahead and use some heroism just so you can see the difference. Um, of which there's not a ton, but you know he went down a little bit faster. Um, intangible benefits d definitely translate to very tangible benefits in that if you are less distracted by doing many things at the same time, you are less likely to make a mistake, and that mistake is less likely to be a fatal one. Um, so draining, you can see all our skills are in purple. Um, draining kind of sucks. It just reduces your skills by a certain amount. It's not too bad at moderate yellow level there. Um, at red, it can get kind of gross. The only way to cure draining... Ah, uh, yeah, see, it's red. I really... I'll just shoot him. Uh, the only way to get rid of draining, and you can see it went down there, is to gain experience. It does not... Uh, unlike earlier versions of the game back in like 0 0.7, 0 0.8, um, it used to take away experience, like actually reduce your level, which was just horrible. Horrible, horrible, horrible. Oh boy, yikes! Well, there's the entrance to the lair and a lot of angry critters, in which there are beasts. Um, anyway, the only. But now it just it reduces your skills until you have gained a certain amount of experience. Uh, so it's not too bad. Um, I think I want to switch to the Bow of Flame here. Uh, and ah, uh, here is where we check out our spells again. Um, Mephitic Cloud is at 19%. That is worth a shot. Yeah, we did it. Okay, see the question marks by the yak and the elephant? That means they are confused. A thing that I love, and you will notice that this crocodile, without us really doing anything to it, although it may have been a, an arrow that we fired and missed and hit while he was not in our line of sight, it is probably the case that the elephant, in its confusion, trampled over this crocodile blah, 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 um, and dealt damage to it for us, which is quite handy. Uh, it did, if it had killed it, we would not have gained any experience for it, which is a shame. Only your summoned creatures give you partial experience for their kills. Uh, but, you know, it's still a monster down. I would rather miss out on the experience for one monster and be guaranteed to survive a fight than get a little more experience at the risk of death. Experience does you no good if you are a corpse. So, um, the fact that they are confused is great. They will wander around in uh, different directions. Um, they, can they can still attack you if they're close, although they have a an increased chance to miss and they can hit their allies, which is great. If we were near lava or deep water, they could also fall into the water or deep lava and drown. Elephants might be tall enough to survive deep water. Nothing survives lava, particularly, unless it's flying, but, you know, whatever. Um, ah, I thought the elephant was dead in my... Um, in my haste to proceed to the lair, I did not allow for the fact that the elephant might not be dead. Uh, fortunately, we have... Um, well, one corpse in range, I suppose. So we have a little bit of uh, increased regen. We can go ahead and try to kill this elephant. If we need to, we can arrow of dispersal it. You see it trampled us. It'll shove you backwards. It. This is why elephants are dangerous, um... Um, amongst other reasons, I mean, they, they hit hard and whatnot, but if you are trying to stair dance, if you are trying to, you know, climb up and down stairs and pull monsters up with you so you fight fewer of them at once, uh, elephants can trample you off of the stairs as you're trying to ascend, and you fail to ascend, uh, and instead get trampled by elephants. Um, fortunately, that, that was fine. We did pretty, pretty well there. Uh, our regeneration helped a lot for sure. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here and pray over this one, and then pray over this one. You see the regen, I don't know if you noticed, but the, the you can see the message here, you feel less regenerative. Um, the timer ran out on that before we got to the corpse and sacrificed it, so we didn't actually lose out on any hit points. We're close to full. Um, yeah, we'll pull this frog near us and stab him. Giant frogs are dangerous on dungeon level... Two, three, not so much on dungeon level 11. Uh, this is a, a giant slug. 
it is less dangerous than its counterpart, the elephant slug. Elephants are often more dangerous than giants, not always. Uh, they are another embarrassing enemy to die to. Uh, not as embarrassing as the worm, because they do hit quite hard, and they have many, many hit points. Uh, but they are also slow, you can always outrun them, yada yada yada, etc. Uh, but they are more likely, since they appear often in the lair, ah, hungry ghost, it makes us hungry. As it damages us, we don't care, because we have Amulet of the Gourmand. Uh, we can just devour things until we're engorged. Um, anyway, they, t they tend to show up in the lair, which... Uh, has many animals that will charge you at once, like yaks, or later on the uh, exponentially more fearsome death yaks. Uh, and, you know, elephants and their big brothers, the dire elephants. Um, those, are all, those are all things that can be attacking you and making it really inconvenient that a giant slug is sneaking up on you. Uh about to hit you with its eye stalks, or however it works, to slime ya. Okay, um, we have a polar bear. Sounds like a bow of flame situation to me. I don't know uh, if polar bears are actually... They're resistant to cold. Uh, they're not actually vulnerable to fire, unlike actual ice enemies. It's just got blubber and fur and stuff like that. So we're gonna take a few pot shots. Uh, I kind of wish that worker ant hadn't gotten in between us. Um, here's what we'll do. We'll conjure some flame. It's down to 10%. Uh, even even with our minor draining, I don't think that's... May uh, maybe enough to reduce conservation. So we'll see when that goes away, how good we are. Um, I did see a message that conjurations reached level 5. So when we are undrained, uh, these spells will be easier to cast. You really want single-digit failure rates at most for your spells. Uh, reliability is key in this game. Um, so anyway, we, we conjured flame there. Animals are smart enough not to walk into the flame if they weren't already about to take a step there. Um, and even then they will sometimes move back away from you if they can, which lets us la -ha -ha, shoot them with arrows from our bow of flame while, uh, ah, hey, we got our first god gift. Eh, arrows of frost. Okay, that's cool. Whatevs. Oh, crap, we're burdened. But we're close to being able to create a stash. Anyway. Um. Oh, we can drop this falchion. We are done jellying. Uh. Oh, hi, imp. Oh, it summoned, uh. Ufatubus. Oh, interesting thing about demons in this game, demon like type or class monsters, um, you know, they're all vulnerable to holy stuff, which we can't wield as a demon's bond. They're vulnerable to certain god stuff. Uh, the Shining One and Zin hate them. Uh, but in this lower left corner of the, the tile is a little pentagram, a little star. The number of points of the star that are glowing represents the, the relative strength of the demon. So that is a, a level one, uh, or a, a rank one demon. Not very strong, pretty easy to take care of. Uh, it goes all the way up to rank five, which is like Balrogs and Executioners and, and stuff that will just murder your face, even at the highest highest levels and um, uh, equipment, like gear, uh, gear levels, they're still very dangerous. They can still kill you. Um, they're the the difficulty cur curve of this game caps out at a point uh, where, you know, you c you will continue to get stronger, but there's always stuff that can kill you. Um, unlike these first few levels, where we're, we're generally safe from enemies right now, because uh, we're, we're pretty strong. Um, yeah. Anyway, uh, god gifts are another thing. That's uh, a function of our piety. Okawaru will occasionally give us stuff for free! Um, including ammunition for our bow, which is a great reason to worship him. Um, Trog also gives you weapons. I don't know if he gives you ammunition, and he definitely doesn't give you armor. Uh, Okawaru does both of those things, which is quite nice. Uh, we're going to switch to our spear here. We're no longer afraid of adders. We are certainly not afraid of kobolds. That, uh, that kobold demonologist is a little annoying. He'll summon demons, but again, this version of Crawl uh, Trunk 
0.14, the summons disappear when you kill the summoner. And see, he was not tactical enough to um, to send his summons in first. Uh, soul Eater draws from the surrounding life force. I believe that drains us, drains us further. So you can see that the Soul Eater there um, is a rank three demon. That's actually pretty pretty stout. Uh, yeah, extremely dangerous to us. So. I wasn't really paying attention there. Yeah, and we've got a, a two two pip demon there, an iron devil. He's he's dangerous. Yeah, th those are pretty rough. Uh, fortunately, the the kobold um, made the mistake of moving next to us. We're going to actually switch the bow to guarantee that we kill him as rapidly as possible. Um, there we go. So that we don't have to worry about any of those demons ruining our day. Uh, and see, our draining is gone. We can look at our skills. They're back. Oh, wow. We were drained quite a bit, or we have gained a, quite a bit of experience in conservation. So that is good. I'm going to turn off poison magic. I should have turned it off as soon as it hit three. So you'll see we turned on fire magic and poison magic at the exact same time. We have gained the exact same experience split between both. That is the difference an aptitude makes. Um, across three levels, 0.6 uh, less effective for the fire magic, because of that minus one aptitude. So it's not huge. Uh, minus one is, is not a really big deal. Um, but you could see how minus two, minus three, minus four, and minus five uh, are really rough. And pluses are, are beneficial in the opposite manner. Our invocations increases quite rapidly. And in fact, we're, we're going to go ahead and turn invocations back on, uh, because, uh, no, we still aren't at five pips of piety. Um, Soon, soon, we will get finesse, and we want that to always be usable. We want a 0% or n near 0% failure rate on that uh, on that ability. I feel less regenerative. Um, I guess there was a corpse around there that I missed. Anyway. Um, yeah, because uh, finesse is, is one of our, our panic buttons. It's not the strongest. It's not as strong as, say, um, Luganu. The, the god of the abyss, or god of chaos in the abyss, uh, she provides outstanding, outstanding escape buttons. Uh, there's a streamer that, um, maybe it was Hito? I don't know. There's a streamer that had a, uh, a demon spawn, I think it was a demon spawn abyssal knight. Abyssal knights begin with, uh, ugly things are a little scary, but, um, only if we get more of the one of them hitting us at the same time. So we should be good here. Um, yeah, Abyssal Knights start off worshipping Luganu um, as Chaos Knights start off worshipping Zalm, and Berserkers start off worshipping Trog. I think there might be another Zealot class currently. Uh, the purple corpses, uh, the corpses in purple text, are mutagenic corpses. It means that it gives you a mutation if you eat its meat. You cannot accidentally eat mutagenic meat. You must type why into, do you really want to eat this mutagenic meat? Um, and it's, I think, more often than not, a bad mutation. Uh, man, we, we have not had good luck with armor so far. Fortunately, we have had good luck with remove curse scrolls, so huzzah. Uh, we have an unidentified potion or two. Let's go ahead. Okay, cool. Brilliance. Um, oh, crap. I meant to hit identify and not test quaff that. Fortunately, it was just a potion of berserk rage. We will be very angry, angry for a few minutes and get really hungry. Um, oh crap! There's a uh, there's a jelly on this level. We should not just stand around doing nothing. We should recklessly assault this ogre. Um, that slurping sound was the indicator of. Um, uh, let's let's see. Let's pull out our bow of fire for this ice beast. Um, Slurping sound is the indicator that a jelly has eaten an item on the ground, and I want all of the items. I want to have all of the items if I can. Um, unfortunately, we have no way of telling where that jelly is from here. Uh, we can eat the yak if things will ever leave us alone. Oh, there's a centaur there that I didn't even see. Okay. Oh, this is a little scary. We'll run away, keeping the polar bear between us and the centaur, so the centaur will not fire until he moves to the side. That is good. Now I wish I had that potion of berserk rage. Uh, we have to take time out to eat a cheese. That takes 
two turns. Not great, but... Oh, okay, it does say a distant slurping noise, so we can tell that it's somewhere a little further away from us on the level. Oh, piffle puffle. Yep, I guess we just shoot arrows. I'm aiming at the centaur so that if it misses the polar bear, the, air, the arrow will continue to fire. Uh, you can... Oh, there it goes, Berserk. Um, we have to be very careful now. Oh, wow, yeah. Very careful indeed. Let's heal some wounds. Let's become heroic. Uh, oh, here's... Here's your skills on drugs. Uh, here's our skills <laughs> with the heroic bonus. Uh, five ranks in each of them. Uh, which is a, a big boost at this point in the game, uh, for the most part. Not as big as it would have been, you know, five or six levels ago, but significant. Enough that I feel confident shooting a few arrows at that polar bear. Yeah. Okay, we're good. We're good. Um, heroism costs very little piety. It says it costs piety, and that is true. But it costs little enough that you should not be hesitant to use it as frequently as you need to. Ugh, Urug. I think he throws javelins. A coarse and lanky orc. Urud lost his eye in a fight with a harpy and has sworn to slay every last one of them. Unfortunately, the vision in his remaining eye is not very good, and he has mistaken you for one for a harpy. He smells terrible. He looks extremely dangerous and is wielding a war axe. I, I don't like being in this situation. I really don't. I don't feel like we have enough options available to us because of that manticore that was up here. I don't know what's in this passage. We foolishly retreated this way instead of this way, which is more towards what we have explored already. Um, and any moment he can throw javelins, which are very, very dangerous. Javelins hurt a ton. I do recommend if you are a fighter type character, if you have some amount of strength, picking them up early because they will just demolish your enemies. They will not decimate your enemies, because decimating kills only 1 in 10. They will do far more than decimate your enemies. So I'm going to read a scroll of teleportation. We have four of them. Uh, and I'm reading it now, before I even attempt to fight Urug. Ah, uh, wow, that... <laughs> Thank you, scroll of teleportation, those... That one screen of distance is going to make all the difference. Um, scrolls of teleportation, uh, as you might have guessed, are much, much better when you have explored most of the level. Oh, ouch, ouch. That hurt a lot. He's wielding a bow. I bet, he, I bet he's wielding that centaur's stupid bow. Oh, that's so bad. We are... Ah, oh, man. Oh, that was my last potion of heal wounds. Maybe I, maybe one of them froze. That's really bad. Hmm. Well, dear viewers, this this could be the end of us. It is quite possible. We are going to activate heroism. Our increased evasion from our dodging skill did not help us. We are going to drink a potion of curing. Get us a few hit points. Ah, uh, see, we had finesse for just a second. We were just barely at enough piety, and then we used heroism and dropped down. But that's okay, it would not have been at a very high success rate, so I wouldn't have really wanted to use it anyway. Okay, okay, here's what I think we're going to do. I think we're going to dig, we're going to use our wand of digging to dig a hole through this wall and hope it reaches here. Uh, and from there, we can maybe escape to the lair, which would be fine. Gosh, there really aren't any other staircases around here, are there? Up there is the nearest one. I don't think we can survive running over here. There's No, there's no way we can survive running over there. He would get too many shots on us. I don't know how many arrows he has, probably lots. Uh, he has at least as many arrows as we fire at him. Minus the, the break rate, of course. We only have 13 arrows, plus some special ones. Uh, yeah, I'm going to dig this way. Hope it connects with down here. At least that way I will get out of his line of sight for a couple of turns. Then we'll probably try a Mephitic Cloud uh, so that we confuse him. He probably won't shoot us with his bow while he's confused. Then we can... 
Well, we can go from there if we survive that far. Okay, well, there's a room in between. That's fine, I suppose. Okay, we're out of line of sight. That Crimson Imp is not a threat, but it is annoying. We're going to Mephitic Cloud here. Thank goodness we did not miscast it. 10% is not terrible. We're going to Mephitic Cloud there, so he won't walk through. Uh, uh, he can see us. This is not great. Do I have a scroll of fog? I do not have a scroll of fog. I don't really want to test these at random. We don't have a scroll of blinking. I don't feel confident enough to read a scroll of teleportation and wait it out. Um, all right. Let's do this a step at a time, very slowly. Oh, oh, good. That imp is in the way. Awesome. We will survive this. That's good. Yeah, yeah. Okay, awesome. That saved our life. Thank you, imp. Thank you for being you. Thank you for being alive. Um, yeah, as long as that imp follows us, it'll be in a straight line. Urig will also follow in a straight line, and he will not fire through an ally under most circumstances. Well, you know, out of the frying pan into the elf mage. Uh, it would have been much more clever if I'd said out of the frying pan into the fireball. Oh well. Uh, maybe next time. More arrows of flame. That's good. Uh, ammunition, in spite of the fact that it can break, uh, is still much more forgiving now than it was in early versions of Crawl. Originally, uh, originally it had a higher chance, a much higher chance of breaking if it were unenchanted and um, so you had to burn scrolls of enchant weapon on your stacks of ammunition, and it was it was very frustrating. Okay, so I think what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and equip our normal bow, but quiver up these bows of flame. We have a lot of bows, or arrows of flame, sorry. Arrows of flame. So we get the benefit of flaming arrows and the damage accuracy bonus of this bow. And I think, I think we can go back down this same staircase. I think we can. If Urug is there, it's unlikely that he's, that he's right next to the staircase, and even if he is, that's probably okay for us if we pop heroism. Um, we'll be able to take him on, even though he's wielding a war axe. We'll probably have enough dodging slash armor to, to be okay. I am going to try and just pop down into the lair. Ah, see, this is one case where we don't want to wield the Oh crap, there is Urug. Alright, we're gonna we're gonna We're gonna try to fight him now that we have a contingency plan here. Oh, except that he's gonna freeze our stuff. Nope, 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 nope. Uh that's there are just too many things that can go wrong with that for me to like the idea of that. Okay. Um Oh, silly me, I had a ring of positive energy. I should have used that fighting the whites. That would have been intelligent of me. Prevent that draining. Draining is a negative energy effect, so if you are wearing a ring of resist negative energy, or a ring of positive energy, rather, um, I would rather be engorged than get a little bit of piety. Because this way we can get more piety later. Uh, bees! Oh, and that jelly keeps eating things up. That's so frustrating. I know that I have a bunch of arrows. Oh, there it is. Good. Awesome. Um, okay, we're going to fire using the period key so that the arrow stays there. Oh, crap. It's eating my arrows. Oh, it ate so many arrows. Worthless jelly. All right, we'll see if there's one little charge left in this wand. Yep, maybe one more. Blow it up. Yeah, we blew up the jelly. See, it? we blew up the jelly. You blew up the jelly. Jelly exploded! It's like playing with Gak when you were a kid. Okay, here we're going to switch to these stupid darts that are mostly worthless and blow up that spore. I don't think these colonies give you experience anymore. They used to when you destroyed the last of the, the colony. And you can kind of tell where they're going by the, the, the highlighted tiles there. Oh, ugh. Well, that's gross. Another jelly. I guess... Huh. Okay.
we'll let the jelly finish that off. We'll. I don't really care so much about these arrows of frost. Um, cold is certainly useful in places like the snake pit, where cold attacks, anything reptilian when damaged by a cold attack, can um, sorry, they, they can suffer a slowing effect every time they're hit by a cold attack. Uh, so um, if you hit them with cold arrows or cold spells or whatever, it can make them easier to fight. Uh, but that's that's really the biggest benefit to cold, aside from the additional damage. Man, all these jellies! I wonder if there isn't a layer, or uh, an entrance to the slime pits around here. I, I thought, though, that it only appeared in the layer itself. Man, I hate... Okay, I didn't, didn't have time to eat those arrows. That's fine. Um, why I'm running around willy-nilly with auto-explorer is beyond me. Okay, that red barbs means that the manticore has stuck its spines into us, and we have to wait a couple of turns. Oh, oh, yikes, electric eel. Run away, run away, run away, run away. Electric eels are brutal. They shoot lightning bolts at you. Um, and I do not have resist electricity, so that is a frightening prospect. And they shoot them at, at, a, at an alarming rate. They shoot them every turn, I believe, if not slightly faster. Man, that's a really tough... Oh, that's because I was using Arrows of Frost like a dummy instead of switching back to Flame. Okay, whatever. Um, we're, we're being a little bit careless here, which means... Uh, which And this video is a half an hour. I, I am going to take a short break because I am um, I'm getting distracted and I'm rushing through things, and I don't want this to be the last video that you, dear viewers, see. So I'm going to go ahead and end this video, and we'll see you soon when we return to the Honorable Judge Hand on level 11 of the dungeon.